What's up guys, Evil D here, and tonight I want to respond to something I've seen raised within the Duolingo discussion area. I've also seen it in other areas, and you probably know I'm speaking English. I don't speak English very often on this channel anymore, um, but I'm speaking English because this is something for English speakers. Uh, Esperanto's already sold on this, we don't care about this topic, but I thought this would be interesting for new learners of Esperanto. So, okay, so the question is, is Esperanto a useful language? Well, that is so subjective. I don't even know how to start with that type of thing. But let, you know, I'm gonna give you some of my personal experiences because realistically, I could throw studies at you to show why it's useful in this, you know, instance and that instance and whatever, but you know, that shit's boring. No one wants to read that stuff. Like, I don't want to read that stuff. I fall asleep reading about that stuff. So I'm going to give you some of my personal anecdotal evidence because, you know, that's the best type of evidence. But okay, so let's, let's, let's look at my own history and why I think it's a freaking awesome language. Okay, so first up, um, I suck at languages. In all honesty, I totally suck. And most people who watch my Esperanto channel will go, Whoa, dude, how can you suck at languages? You speak Esperanto fluently, whatever. I'm not talking myself up here. I'm just, you know, just saying, okay? Um, and that's... I, realistically, I suck at languages. I studied Japanese at school and failed miserably. I can count to 10, but in all honesty, I will say right now, I was only ever in that class because of the girls. Um, and I studied French. Yeah, failed at that. I'm currently studying Chinese. Not much progress. Studying Spanish. Slowly making inroads, you know, type of thing. But Esperanto has... It's the only language I've ever actually conquered. Now, this... This, for me, gave me the courage that, how's the best way to put this? Okay, so I want to learn languages. I've always wanted to learn a language. It made me feel cultured, okay? I know that's probably a lame excuse, but I always felt that someone who could speak another language was cultured. I come from like a monolingual country, Australia, okay? Nearly everyone here speaks only English, unless you're in Sydney, then you've got like heaps of demographics, but generally Australians only speak English. Um, so I I felt that that was something that I needed to do, but I could never find a language I could actually freaking conquer and then I conquered Esperanto and I think the only reason I managed to conquer it is because with every language I'd start and I'd study a little bit and then I would get distracted and I'd be like Ooh, butterfly come back type of thing like I just easily get distracted I just move on okay but with Esperanto I was progressing so fast that there was always something new so I couldn't realistically get distracted it was just like ah oh cool I've got that oh there's something else oh cool and then next thing I know I'm fluent okay now it didn't just like happen like that overnight it took time like with any language but it gave me the courage to continue on in itself. Esperanto is like the recorder of languages. Literally, if you want to learn foreign language, you want to learn many languages, start with Esperanto. It's the easiest language. Um, it's the easiest language that's alive and you can use in every context. There's obviously languages which can be easier, that are designed to be easier, but they're just not used, realistically. Um, so yeah, that, that was my main thing. Now, the second thing is, a lot of people go, well, that's great. You could get that from any language. I guess, you know, your own created language if you wanted. Um, but that doesn't really answer the question, is Esperanto useful? Well, I've traveled through Europe using Esperanto. I've stayed in free accommodation using Esperanto, that type of stuff. And then there's a lot of people that go, well, you can do that with couch surfing. Yeah, I guess you're right in that sense. I guess I could do that with couch surfing. Um, surfing. And then other people will be like, okay, what about... um?" Economically, have you made any money off this? This is the main one that everyone here asks. Can you make money off of it? If you can't, what's the point of it? And you know, I have realistically made nothing off of Esperanto, like money-wise, financially, but it really doesn't matter for me because because of the size of the language, I'm able to actually do something artistic within the language and it's seen by people. Look, I'm, I'll give you a little bit of my backstory. I'm a trained actor, okay? Um, I've done a year of uh, theatre training, I've taken part in local TV shows, all that type of stuff. Um, I'm fully into the industry, but I'm just a nobody. Literally, I'm a nobody. I'll probably always be a nobody in the English community. Now, in an Esperanto community, I actually have a place. I'm able to fill a niche 
the niche being YouTube videos, okay? I'm able to do something and make an impact on other people's life, hopefully in a positive way. Sometimes I traumatize other people, but hopefully in a positive way. So has it been useful? Yes, for me, because it's allowed me to do what I've always wanted to do, which was impossible in the English community. Community, ugh, I can't even speak freaking my own language right now. Um, just because of the pure saturation we have in the English community. So in Esperanto community, I am someone, I have a position, I know what I can do, and I mean something to people. But I'm fulfilling an internal need, and that need is being fulfilled through knowing a secondary language, and um, also the fact that I'm able to make an impact on other people's lives. Now, one thing I have noticed, and a few people have said this, and it's really, really strange to me, so I just wanted to focus on this one thing is, and people have said, well, I don't like Esperanto because it seems elitist. And this comes usually from polygots, which is really strange. And then when you ask them about it, what do you mean by it's elitist? And they go, well, only usually educated people learn Esperanto. People who've got time and all that type of stuff, they go and learn Esperanto. And I'm like, that does not make sense to me. Because realistically, Esperanto is an easy language to learn, which means that you don't have to invest so much time into it. But if you want to go learn French, Chinese, you're going, to, you're going to invest the same amount of time, money, resources, everything into it just to become conversable. Like you can't even, you'll never become fluent. You'll never be on par with a native speaker. But just to get on a level where you can speak to them about everyday topics, you've got to dedicate so much time. So how is that not more elitist than me dedicating my time, part of it to you know, a language that can be learned in a tenth of the time. So I just wanted to focus on those things because a lot of people like to pull up studies about how fast Esperanto is to learn and all this type of stuff, but for me that really doesn't matter. It's one, the fact that I actually managed to conquer a language, two, that I'm able to make an impact in the community, I'm actually, I have a place here. And, you know, another thing I didn't even mention, but I've mentioned so much in my other videos, is the fact that it has a very unique culture and history, unlike anything else in the world. Like, how many other languages were born out of an idea? So, is it useful for making a career? Maybe not right now, but it is expanding massively, this language. It's growing massively. You just gotta look at Duolingo. They've launched Spanish, uh, Esperanto for Spanish speakers. Who knows what's next? So maybe, yes, in the future, it will be an ep economically important language. At the moment, no, but who cares? Because I've already given you all my other reasons. So that's it. If you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video. And if you're not there, I will find you and I'll leave my mark on your ass. <laughs> And as always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, who are Alexander Tolfes and JZ Knuckles, Ludisto, Lupe, Margarita, Kilpak, Robert Nielsen, Robert Port, Sarah SC, Shane Power, Slavish Galayev, I, Tommy Lindsley. And if you want to donate to my channel so that it can become better in the future, you can through my Patreon link below in the description.